Uh, Leslie, you made history. You were the first woman on Monday Night Football, uh, first to present the Lombardi Trophy, first in the Hall of Fame. What were some of the biggest challenges, though, for you early in your television career? Um, first, I have to tell you how significant these people were to me. It's ironic that I'm here, but uh, Carl, uh, that, as you guys all know, that linebacking crew was Mount Rushmore, and they did not have to spend one second with anyone they didn't want to. But Carl, you were so great to me. He listened. He answered me honestly. If He knew he could trust me. If he said it's off the record, it was off the record. And uh, I, have, I owe Carl enormous thanks. Uh, Joe was um, the gentleman who called me to tell me that I would be the first woman enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And Joe, I think you probably remember this, but I said, do you have the right number? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so grateful. And Neil gave me so many chances. Neil and Ted Shaker hired me. And uh, Neil put together probably the most magical year, I think, in, in maybe the history of television in 1992. Of course, it was the World Series. Toronto over Atlanta, and the Final Four, Duke repeated uh, as national champion. Also in Minneapolis. Also in Minneapolis. <laughs> and um, the Masters was when Jim Nance. was not in Minneapolis. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Jim got to present Freddie yeah. Couples, his roommate, yeah. and the Super Bowl that was there. And Minneapolis. And Ted Shaker and Neil, um, I remember we were in the production meeting. And the, so you get to the post game, right? You go through the pregame, the game, the post game. And either you or Ted said, OK, and after the game, Leslie's going to present the Lombardi Trophy. And everybody, including me, mouths fell open. I mean, there was Terry Bradshaw, there was Brent Musburger, but um, showed you know just enormous faith and opportunity. And maybe for all of you, I've mentioned all of you many times that nobody lands on Normandy by himself. So uh, I, I am very grateful for the opportunity. Very special person. Oh, very special person. No, no, Indeed. <laughs> Uh, Carl, do you remember as players hearing Whitney Houston in your next Super Bowl? The second Super Bowl was absolutely incredible. She was singing to me. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> who, who knew? Literally. <laughs> OK, I'm right? I'm seated. <laughs> well, I'm standing on the sideline during the national anthem. <laughs> And I'm square right there with her. And she's singing and she's smiling. I'm like, she's talking to me. <laughs> and I happen to know her, too, though, um, because she's from New Jersey. And I'd gotten a chance to know her, you know, because her family, her, her brothers were Giants fans. But I, I tell everybody, she was singing that <laughs> to me. Oh, I remember it. It was the most incredible moment. It was the most incredible moment for America, too, because obviously we had just um, started a conflict. We didn't start a conflict. We were in a conflict. And um, everything surrounding that game was just so tight, the security and everything. And it was probably the proudest moment as an athlete in terms of um, identifying not just with sports, but with America in a moment that just really you felt that you were a part of something special because it's what America needed. We were all on edge at that time. So um, it was just, you just felt the, the energy of it. And I'm sure if you talk to the, the players on the Buffalo Bills side, you just felt that you were a part of bringing this country to a place, you know, of, of stillness that, hey, we can enjoy this for a moment. And that was down in Tampa when yeah. you guys beat the Buffalo Bills, Joe's gonna, Buffalo well, Bills. Well, I've got to tell you, you know, that. no, I got to tell Carl something. And, and at, at that stadium, I was at the game, and uh, I was helping out the Bills. No offense. And uh, I'm taking no, good. And I was with our friend Denny Lynch, who was the, the, then the uh, public relations director for the Bills, and we were the last ones coming out of the stadium on the Bills practice day, because you just kind of hang back, make sure everything's done. And as we're walking out. There's a car parked in, in the kind of one of the runways in the stadium, one of the concourses. And there's these guys in full bomb gear yeah. lifting a box out. Mm -hmm. They saw us coming. They froze. We saw them. We froze. Neither, n nobody knew what, you know, well, they were rehearsing. We didn't know. We we're having a heart attack. And they're not, we're not supposed to be in the stadium, it turns out. They're having a heart attack wondering why we're there and who we are. But that security was unbelievable. But the, the, the stadium that day became a cathedral. Yes. I mean, it really did. It became this cathedral of, of patriotism, of unanimity. And, and it just was a different atmosphere altogether. It really was. Pre-game show, the flyover, everything was so spectacular. It was the first Super Bowl where you went through magnetrometers and yeah. the barricades and everything. But you really felt this sense of, of, I guess patriotism is the word, but you just really felt a part of it. You were glad to be there, but the same token, you were kind of looking around a little bit. Yeah. Too. 
instant replay has mm -hmm. been a big topic, uh, not only this year, but for the last 15 or 20 years in the NFL, but this year in particular with the fact that pass interference can now be reviewed. That's a Could you ever have imagined 25, 30, 40 years ago that, that TV would have such an impact? Because the, the, you know, a lot of the viewers and fans don't realize this, but the replays that the officials are looking at all come from TV. The NFL does not have their own cameras right. in the stadium. All of those replays come from the TV networks. Right. Replay started just before I got to CBS. Tony Verner claims that uh, uh, he was the initiator of playing it back to take another look. Uh, you mentioned that it was a marriage, and it has been. And as I look back over almost 50 years of watching or being involved with uh, the NFL, uh, the, the way it has progressed and the fact that at one time, you have to keep in mind, there were just three networks. How many of you remember three networks? <laughs> There's somebody, not too many. And then there were four networks, and then there was ESPN, and then it all Seven. developed. But the secret for the NFL, and the reason why it's actually more important today than it was 30, 40 years ago, is that in the old days, advertisers and sponsors and viewers had another option. Each network got about a third of the audience. And that was it. That was the extent of your viewing choice, one of three networks. Now, out there with digital platforms, you have an unlimited number of choices, but perhaps three or 400 television choices. And yet, the only property, the only property that can generate last weekend over 65 rating points, over 100 million viewers, but just the first weekend, of the NFL was professional football was the NFL. So it is more important today, I think, to our culture because there are no other options really other than the NFL in terms of you want to watch, you want to reach the American public, you need to do it with the NFL. And uh, the, the fact that technology has grown, so much of the technology you see today was experimented and pioneered with the NFL, uh, the fly cam, the, the replay, uh, the, 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 uh, the gold the line, the yellow line. Dozens and dozens of things that are now commonplace in sports television were started, experimented, and worked on the NFL.